This is Dave Pellegrinelli again from AFX. You probably reached us at this video from our website, titlesearch.com. Some of you may be here from our website, mineralrightssearch.com or easementsearch.com. In any case, uh, a lot of questions that we've had in the last uh, couple of weeks have had to do with property mineral rights. Uh, those may involve oil and gas leasing and may involve um, other types of minerals like coal or, or hard assets. In some cases it's water rights or riparian rights. So first thing is if this video, if you're seeing this live uh, right here on the um, yeah, this side, uh, on the uh, side of your screen uh, there's a little chat function where you can type in a question we can answer that live. Uh, in the upper left hand corner of the screen you'll see um, or right hand corner of the screen you'll see a, a live chat uh, little button there, a blue button that's if we're offline, you can type in that uh, question there, we'll answer it afterwards. In some cases, there may be an operator, a non-video uh, operator that can answer a question. So yeah, for mineral rights, um, you're going to find that these records don't run usually with the title uh, rights to the property. They're separate uh, property ownership rights uh, from the surface rights. You can have a house on a property, a uh, structure. The land rights all run as one uh, set of ownership rights. The subsurface uh, rights to the property, mineral rights, gas, oil, uh, any of those leasing rights, can run separate from the land. It may have been may have been split from those land records uh, a great deal of time in history. Now, for example, if uh, minerals or oil had been discovered or were being pursued 50, 80, 100 years ago those mineral rights or oil rights may have been separated from the property title at that point and may have been transferred back and forth between different parties separate from who owned the land or the farm or the house that's on the surface. So when we do searches for uh, mineral rights as far as a property title, it almost becomes a separate search. But the other part of it is usually the transfers of those rights started a great deal of time in history from current day. So it usually runs something like this. The first thing we do is we run a chain of title on the surface rights because that's the only ownership records that we would know of to start with. So we know the current owner of the property. Uh, we run the chain of title back from that owner to the prior owner, prior owner, uh, back 50, 80, 100 years, uh, depending upon the needs of the client. Once we have that chain of title on all those owners, we then run a separate parallel chain of title on any mineral rights for each one of those parties. So for each grantor on the surface rights for the house, the farm, the land, we're going to run a separate search for that person to see if any of those people had transferred away mineral rights. Because once it's transferred away, it won't run with the deeds or mortgages or other documents that you'll find in a standard regular title search, which is why mineral rights uh, search is completely separate from a standard title search. Uh, you'll find no reference uh, to mineral rights on deeds or mortgages except for that first transfer away, and then from that point that becomes a separate chain, almost like a separate property. You may also find that there are assignments of those rights. So if XYZ uh, Petroleum Company purchased oil rights to a property uh, 80 years ago, they may have assigned it away to somebody else. And that's where some of our research comes in. What happens if that company has assigned or leased uh, rights to that uh, under or subsurface assets to another entity? That's something that needs to be searched separately as well. Some of that may be found in UCC records, uh, Secretary of State records, uh, or other corporate uh, partnership records. One thing to keep in mind with mineral rights, it's very important to determine those because and get the actual original documents because the original mineral rights transfer may also include land access rights for the operations, meaning that just because they sold the rights underneath, they may also include with that access to the surface to be able to drill down. So you have fences, you have structures, maybe you have a retaining pond, or some other um, surface uh, you know, structures or, or elements, those can be disturbed by somebody who is producing 
the assets or commodities from underneath that surface. So the exact wording of what rights they have to access the surface, and maybe something as simple as uh, ingress and egress across the property to get to a certain point. In some cases, the production of that uh, petroleum product is done by slant drilling, where they drill from a, a, a property that's next door, and they go down, and then they go on an angle to get underneath your property. Uh, there may also be pooling rights, meaning that there's a pool of petroleum or gas underneath a wide range of properties, and they're going to drill somewhere else and pull from that pool through one well that exists elsewhere. So getting to the bottom of who owns those mineral rights, who transfer them away, are there any royalties due to the surface owner? Just because of the fact that mineral rights have been transferred away 100 years ago, even if the surface owner does not currently own the rights, that owner may be entitled to royalties from anything that has been discovered in the past or will be discovered in the future. There may be buyback opportunities for the current owner. So searching for mineral rights is a, is a complicated process. Uh, it's normally performed by title examiners who are, who are very well experienced. It's not um, you know, just a regular generic vanilla title search. You have to go well beyond uh, the title records that involve surface rights. You know, you can't just search for 12 Main Street and find a mineral right. So, um, getting to those records may take a little more time than a standard title search because it does start with running a full chain of title and then looking at each one of those, um, you know, grantors on that uh, on that chain. Uh, separately, uh, there are searches for uh, easements on a property. The searching is similar to mineral rights in that the easements may not run with the regular land record documents. They're not going to be shown on deeds or mortgages or liens. The easements will be shown in a separate document. Who knows when they were recorded? They're not part of that chain of owners from one owner to another. Um, they're a separate uh, record uh, entirely. In some cases, they're not even recorded in the land records. They may be recorded in zoning uh, records or some other planning department. Uh, but looking for those easements is important. If you have a landlocked property, you want to make sure there's an easement for you to get from your property to a public road. Uh, if you have a landlocked property adjacent to you, you want to make sure that any easements across your property are, are known about prior to doing any construction of fences or, or anything like that. There are probably utility easements on a property. We find in many cases that utility easements are granted for power lines, sewer pipes, water pipes, uh, cable TV, what have you. And the uh, municipal um, companies that provide those um, may use areas of the property not covered by the easement. And this may go on for years. So if a property owner wants to protect their rights, uh, you need to take a look at what easements were actually granted and make sure that the uh, utility company is only using the areas and the types of easements prescribed for on that document. Because if they're using a different area or they run three pipes instead of two or they you know, cut a corner instead of going straight across, um, letting that unlicensed easement survive for more than a certain number of years may automatically grant a new easement for that unlicensed use um, through adverse possession. So by catching that early and, and matching up the actual use versus the uh, what's been prescribed in the easement, you may be able to either negotiate a payment settlement or to have the easement uh, remediated so that uh, that new sewer pipe that wasn't supposed to be there isn't going to conflict with a new building uh, interest or an addition or putting on a new patio or putting in a swimming pool uh, five or six years down the road. And that may go for you or even a prospective buyer. Because many prospective buyers, if you look to sell your property in five years and they decide, I like this house, but we always want to have a pool, but we want to put a pool in this part of the yard, if they run a property survey as part of a pre-purchase due diligence and find that that area is not available for building because there's a sewer pipe across it. Um, you may find that that sewer pipe was never supposed to be there and had it been discovered three or four years prior, it could have been moved. 
but now that a certain period of time has gone by and adverse possession has kicked in, the owner of that easement may be able to continue to use it even though it was not part of their original um, documented settled easement. So easements, uh, mineral right searches, it's, it's become a big um, subject of inquiry for us. Again, titlesearch.com is our website. Uh, you can reach us at our toll-free number, 877-848-5337. Make sure you put uh, your questions over here uh, when you have them or send them to us through our webpage, and uh, you'll see them on a future video.